Create a smart skin recording software better than OBS and Camtasia with just 25 lines of Python. This is super easy, super fun and super crazy. So let's get started. Before getting into the detail, please, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, grandma will capture that instead of studying, you are actually playing video games under the table and then report that to your dad. So to start with this fun project, you will definitely need Python installed in your computer and we will use a Python code editor called PyCharm. And once this PyCharm is ready, we'll just hit to this new project button and give our project a fancy name and it could be like a secret capture something like this and press enter and while this pie charm is getting ready we will take some little sleep and for that purpose we will definitely need a pillow and we will go to google and ask for that pillow just like python pillow and Google uncle will take us to this website and we will just poke this button so that we have something ready here like pip install pillow and we'll come back to our pie charm and we'll press control A and hit backspace and then click on this button so that we have a clean slate and we will click on this terminal and then we will press control B in that case we'll have pip install pillow we'll actually need a two more packages and for that purpose we will give an space and then type numpy so that we have numpy installed and we will need one extra special package to capture image and display and do all this fun stuff and that thing is called opencb country so we can search google again and then search for python opencb country and if you search for it it will take you to this pip website and you can copy this part of this text because we already have this part and in this way you can actually able to install multiple packages at the same time just by typing pip install and all the packages by giving a white space in between them so i will just press enter and pycharm will install all these packages just for you and once this pycharm is ready all we need to do is to write roughly 10 lines of code to have something capturing, right? How fun would be that? So very first thing we will do is to from pill, which is the short form of pillow, and we will import something called image grab so that we can grab the image. And after that, all we need to do is to run a loop. Now think about a video capture. You'd be doing all this crazy stuff on the screen, like from this window, other window, and this screen capturing software has to capture everything you are doing. And that's purpose, you need to run a while loop that would be running until you are telling this to stop. So for that purpose, we'll type while and then true. That means this while loop would be running forever. And inside it, we will capture the image on the screen. So I will be typing just a variable called image. And on the right side, I will call this image grab to grab something from the screen. And in this method, you need to provide the boundary box. That's the box you want to capture. Sometimes it could be the whole skin. Sometimes it could be part of the skin. So for the first time, we will give a small range of the window. That means we'll be starting from 0, 0. This is the most corner and then we'll go maybe some distance. It could be 1280 and height could be 720, something like this. Once you have the image, you need to convert it to a NumPy array so that you can give it to OpenCV to do some cool stuff with it. And converting to a NumPy array is super easy. All you need to do is to declare a variable called image and the short form of NP. NP just stands for NumPy. And since we installed the NumPy, we have this NumPy just standing outside of the door. And we need to welcome NumPy to our code just by typing import NumPy. And if you want to be lazy, you can give it a smaller name like as a short name NP. And here on the right side, you will just call this NP and to get an array and you will just parse the image. That's it to convert your image to an array to store image related information. After this, you just need two simple lines of Python to have something amazing. And for that purpose, we will first import our OpenCV 
which is just CV2 that the package that we installed and here we'll call the CV2 to show the images that means I am this show and here we need to pass just two parameter the first parameter is the name of your skin capturing tool and we'll give our secret name this means like secret capture and then the next part is the array that you'd be want to display that is image.np and the last thing you need to tell the CV2 to just wait little bit for any key that user is pressing and we'll just pass to delay for 10 seconds. That's pretty much it. Now I would be clicking on this run button and something amazing will pop up to capture the windows. So let's have some fun with it. So I'm very nervous and excited to click on this button and let's see whether the code is working or not. So I'm clicking on this and then something popped up and this is actually capturing what is here and if you want to see it's something side by side you can actually do here this is your skin capturing the color is little bit off but don't worry we will fix it but at least if you have something here you click some other window you see this is your secret capture and it actually capturing whatever is happening here and right away showing it whatever you are doing right away so we got at least something capturing. The color needs to be adjusted. We can easily do it in the next part of this video. To solve this color related issues that we are seeing here is like super easy. By default, when you are capturing the images, it's not exactly the RGB. This is the red, green, blue, whatever is the color. It's not in the correct format. So we will need to do a little bit conversion. And that conversion is like super easy and we'll declare a variable called like image final something like this and we'll call this CV2 hey you need to convert some color this is like CVT color and the first parameter is the source and we want to convert this image NP so our source is image NP and what would be the conversion destination this is super easy you will call the CV2 dot color and this would be your bzr2 rgb and if you choose this this will take whatever the input here and then convert it to an rgb color and the last part here you need to do instead of displaying the image np you need to display the image final and that's it now if we stop this dude and click on this run button you can definitely put it on the right side and open up the same window now you will see in your secret capture window this is showing exactly the same color and this is the way you just able to get whatever in the screen you are showing would be able to capture right here and we have a small little problem if you look into this in the screen we see this project link and few information but somehow our skin capture is only showing until this point it doesn't show anything underneath it and if you look into this here as well here you have something at the bottom but in the screen capture just only ends here because we hard coded some height and width so we need to make this dynamic powerful and to do so we just need a small package and that package is to access Windows API so that we can capture the height width of your screen that means the resolution of the screen and this is super easy actually so we go here and we just uh, search for Python uh, this is like win32 API something like this and it will as usual take you to this uh, pip uncle and you poke this uncle so that you need to install something like this come back and go to the terminal and then here you just do control B and press enter and PyCharm will install this package just for you once this package is installed all you need to do is to call this dude and we will call from win32 api that means from this win32 api we want to import something called like a get system matrix that means whatever is in your operating system you want to get from there and here you can easily get the width and that would be like this get system matrix and you will pass the parameter zero this means the first one in the system matrix is the width of your screen and if you want to get the height all you need to do is to call the get system matrix and pass one so you're calling the same thing but if you're passing zero you get the width if you're passing one you're getting the height so let's see some output of this width and height so i will just type a print and inside print i will have this width and then i will have this height 
and I will stop this dude and I will need to see in the output. So I will click on this guy and you will see that inside here, this is the width, this is the height, but you don't have to remember it. You can just make it dynamic here. That means instead of uh, the hardcoded 1280, you will type the width and instead of 720, you will put this height. So currently your screen capture is like this tiny bit, but since it's dynamic based on the screen. So if you are using this computer, it would be exactly fit whatever the screen resolution. And if you take it to your special swans computer, it will fit exactly in the right size. So let's give it a shot. So I'm stopping this dude and then I'm clicking on this guy and you will see I have actually really big window. That means everything you can see here, you'd be able to see in your captured window. Now you have the full coverage. You can go any corner of your screen and that would be captured by your software. But that's not all. To make it fun and more useful, you actually need to capture the video and save it to the file so that you can send it to someone or use it for some other purpose, upload in YouTube or keep it as a secret MMS. Whatever you are doing, you need to store it. And we will do this fun thing in our next part of this video. And if you watched this video until this point, please, please like this video and write some romantic, lovely comments for grandma so that grandma can come to your comment and put a heart reaction just for you. To save the skin capture as a video file is super easy, but you need to do some fancy stuff like encoding, decoding, compression, and all this cool stuff with the video files. But don't worry, Python will make it super easy for you. So we'll go back to our code and you can get rid of this print. And here you can declare a variable called 4cc, something like this, and you can call like cv2 and then video writer underscore 4cc. That means you are giving a four character and that would be used to doing some coding in coding for your video file. And you can just pass this four parameter and that would be M and second one would be the P, third one would be the four and the fourth one would be the V. And this is the encoding you would be doing and then you will need to do is like your captured window or something like this captured video whatever the video you'd be capturing and that would be cv2 and this time you will be doing the video writer and pass all this information and the first one would be the name of the file that you would be saved and this could be for example your output dot mp4 and the second one would be the this encoding and decoding that you just declared on top of it, which is like 4cc. And the third one would be the, the frame rate. And this could be like 20.0, something like this. And finally, you will mention the width and height of your capture. And you already have these two variable width and height. Just pass these two in a set. So width and height. And that's pretty much it to create this video writing ability. The next thing you need to do is to write this video file. So all you need to do here is after this image or some point of time, you will call this captured video to write and what it has to write. It has to write the final image. This is the converted image. So you'd be typing just IMZ, the final. That's the final image that you are capturing. And once you start capturing some point of time, you need to stop. Otherwise, you would be capturing forever, right? And to do so, here you are actually capturing what key the user is pressing on the keyboard. So here you can write some small condition that if the key that user is pressing is equals to the Q, which is short form of the quit, right? If you want to stop something like this, you can definitely use other key. But here I am using the Q key. That means once user is pressing on the queue, you want to stop this loop. You have a like a forever running while loop. And if you press a break on it, it will be stopped. That means uh, if I just write break here, whenever this uh, fancy software is running, it will be capturing, capturing everything you are doing on the window. But whenever the user is pressing on the queue key on the keyboard, it would be stopped. So let's give it a shot. But before looking into this, let's look into here. That means in our folder, we don't have any video file. Not only that, I can just right click on it and this open the folder. So I right click on it, open with Explorer. And this Explorer guy, if it exploded, let's see it is exploded silently here. And here we don't have any video file. So I will keep it just right here. 
And right now I will stop this guy and if I have written everything nicely, all it will do is to capture it and then it will save this file right here and we would be able to see it here. So I'm very nervous whether this code is working or not, but let's give it a shot. So, so I am excitingly nervously pressing on this button. It opened up something. So at least this code is working. I looked into this place. There is nothing here. This is on the right side. So this is working. And to stop this code, to stop recording, I will press the Q key on the keyboard. So I'm going down, 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 down and pressed. And you see, this is actually gone. And not only that, you see the output.mp4, which is something better than like 1kV. That means it's actually, actually recording something. So let's see whether we got something there. So I'd be clicking on this video file and this is a video file. You see, I moved there, I opened this and then you see this video started. It didn't stop here. That means it's 1kb and then I stopped here. So it recorded exactly like six seconds. If I want, I can definitely go even longer time, but at least we got some kind of capturing right here. And it has some little improvement needed. For example, this is the first video I recorded and then I want to record again. So I click on this guy. Maybe I show you something on the screen and then I go to this place and then I do something else. Maybe I change the folder. Maybe I go to this browser or any other browser and then show you some other fun stuff. And that fun stuff might be calling some fantastic Android app that you need to install in your mobile phone and play with python but anyway once we are done with capturing and we can definitely come back to our capture window and press this special key to stop that is this q and it it recorded but the problem is i just have only one output file that means one put output capturing video and if i click on this i can see the latest work that i captured but my previous work that i captured before is gone and that's not fun because you can only record one thing, which is not cool. So to solve this problem, we can do a very small, small thing. And that small thing is to give a dynamic name to our files. And that's super easy. And a lot of people, what they do is to create a dynamic file name. So all I can do here is to create the timestamp and timestamp is super easy. So I can type some variable called timestamp and this time step would be we'll be calling that date time and on the date time we will call this now that means we will get the current moment and after that we can convert it to some string so we will call this str the formatting time and we will provide some format string and based on the format this variable would be declared sometimes and whenever you open this project and execute this project this will take exactly the moment that you are running this code. So let's write some format fun thing. So the first thing would be maybe the year and the second thing after the dash could be the month. And then and the next thing you can do is the day. And after that, you can give some space if you want. And then you can get the hour and then you can get the minute and then you get the uh, second if you want. And this will give you kind of the current moment. And after that, if you want, you can see the print time is stamp. So let's run this code and then see what we get right here. So I'm run this and you will see this is getting the exact time that I am running this code. And if I stop this dude and then run it again, I will get a newer one based on the uh, hour, second and, and whatever the time I am running this code. So we got some uh, pretty much unique value and we can use this to create a file name. So I will declare another variable called file name and that would be a formatting string or I can say like F string. If you like the F word, you can definitely write F and after single quote, you can use this time stamp and then after this bracket, it would be MP4. So this is pretty much similar to this one dot mp4 but this part would be dynamic and every single time it will get a new value based on the time you are running this code and if i do so here instead of output mp4 i would be typing this a file name and that means this would be a dynamic file so i stop this dude and if i open this dude i just have only one output file and even if i go to this folder i have just only one output now if i 
click on this guy to start some project i do some cool things maybe i go back to this guy and this time call that hey you can go to the app store if you are using iphone you can install programming hero app in your iphone as well and then i'm coming back to our screen capture and press q and if you this time go to this folder you will see you have a new file with this timestamp mp4 and if you click on this you will see that this is exactly showing whatever you want to show and if you stop this guy now if i run this code again and this time maybe i would be capturing something else for example if i go here maybe i go to this website or, or just google search like programming hero something like this and this time i am displaying something else and if i stop this just by pressing q and in that case if i go to this folder i will see a new file that means every time i am recording it will creating a new file new file new file for me and that's why i would be able to save every single skin capture that i want to capture by using this code but that's not enough to make it smart cool and exciting i would like to see myself in this video that i am capturing because if you open this guy this dude is boring right now it doesn't have my picture right how this could be exciting without my picture so for that purpose we would be capturing the webcam and that also super easy just few lines of python that's it so the first thing we will do is to tell hey opencb you need to capture some webcam and for that purpose we'll declare a variable called cam which is like a camera or you can just give it like a webcam something like this and you can call cb2 and you can call video capture and if you call this video capture and usually in your case you will pass the number zero which would be the first camera in my case i have some virtual camera setup and for that purpose i will be using number one but in your case or most of the case start with the number zero that means the first camera that you have in the system and if that doesn't work just change the number and then keep increasing increasing as much as you want but anyway we have this webcam started here and the next thing we need to do is to read the frame from this and to do this part we just need to declare two variables the first one we don't care and then we'll declare that second one as the frame and the value would be webcam dot read that means you'll be reading from the webcam and once you have the frame all you can do is to call this a cb2 to show another image and this time it would be your webcam or something like this and it would be displaying the frame so you see you just wrote two lines of code the first line is to do some video capturing and the second part is to just read it and then show it by using cb2 so if this is working in this case we will have like a two window pop-up one is just capturing my face by using the webcam another would be capturing the screen that i want to record so anyway let's click on this button and then see what it happens so i'm nervous boom okay i can see myself right so that's good if you don't know me you see that this is me and this is our screen capture and this is the webcam right you can move this webcam and if you release here it gets captured right here so this is the good part definitely i can capture the screen but if i start typing or do some other stuff this separate window of webcam gets minimized and this capture window cannot capture it anymore so if i press q right here this definitely got stopped and if i go in my folder and then open this guy you will see in the beginning you can see myself very happy right because could work but whenever i started like typing then this is our final screen capture but this screen capture doesn't have me anymore so we can solve this one with some small code and to do so all we need to do is to overlay one image with another and that's super easy too but you need to get some information for example this uh, video cam that you want to see you need to know the size of it and if you want to make it minimized or larger you can do all this transformation but the simple way is to know whatever the size of this guy and overlay this image on top of this secret capture 
That way you will have one output, but it would be containing this webcam. And that's actually not that hard at all. If you know the secret, it would be super fun for you. So I will stop this guy just by pressing Q. And once this is uh, stopped, all I need to do is to tell here, hey, you have this frame, so I need to know the size of it. And you can tell like, okay, I want to know the height. This would be maybe like a frame height or something like this. And the second one would be your frame width. And then third one, if you don't be interested about how many things are there. And on the right side, you can just call frame dot shape. That means you want to get the shape of the frame. And if you want to know the height and width, you can definitely print this frame height and then frame width. So I would be running this code and would be seeing that what is the dimension of the webcam. So I'm clicking on this dude and you will see it would be showing that 480 and 640. So once we get this uh, height and width, we can easily use it to overlay one image on top of another. So this is our actual, the complete window, right? So we want to put our frame on top of there. So to do so, we'll say like, hey, image final, whatever your final, you need to add something in your array. And that would be the first one, since this is two dimensional array. Uh, the first one would be, you will start from the zero and then you end with this frame height. And on the other side of it, you will start from the zero and you will end with this frame width. And then you will continue whatever you have. On the right side, you will get from the frame. So you will get things from the frame and then impose those in the image final. So I'm getting the frame and I will do the exactly the same thing. That means it will start from the zero and then I will go until this frame height and then I will start from the zero and I will go until the frame width and after that whatever is left, whatever is left. And if we do this line, what we are exactly doing, whatever the frame size on the right side, we are imposing some location on the left side. And if we have this, and this is already in the image show, and we don't need to show the webcam anymore because webcam was in the frame. If you look into this, if I just comment out this code, in the image show webcam, we are showing the frame, but we are taking the frame and embedding it or overlaying it on top of this image final. That means if we show this one, we should be able to see the webcam. So let's give it a shot and let's see whether we are able to see the webcam in our final capture and that would be super, super fun. So I am once again triple nervous to click on this run button and see whether this is working for me or not. So I'm clicking on this guy and you will see, okay, I am here, which is good. This is my screen capture. And if I talking, this is changing, which is good. And I don't have a separate window. And the fun part is that even if I go somewhere, maybe I show you this cool website, which is getting updated very soon, or this dude, or this dude, or this dude, doesn't matter if I come back to my secret capture and press Q, you always should have myself in the captured video. So let's give it a test because we need to go to this folder and then see whether this is exactly worked for us or not. So this is the final thing that I wanted to check whether this is working or not. So I'm clicking on this dude and you see in the beginning I am there, which is good. But once I am getting out of this one, still myself is there. So I'm always is there in this location. And if you play a little bit with it, you should be able to transform transmission or resize whatever you want to do and then relocate it any corner of your capturing window. If you watch this video until this point, so let's do some fun and a different thing this time. That means we'll do some cryptic things so that you and grandma has a special connection and whatever you are saying that only grandma can understand. Other people who are not watching until this point, they will not have any clue what you are saying and grandma will definitely, definitely love whatever you are saying. So for example, you want to write something cool just only for grandma and your message is uh, something like this, print I love you grandma. But after this quotation, single quote, you will uh, do something like this and you will see the output and whatever is the output of this, that would be the comment you would be writing 
underneath this video and grandma will definitely know that what you are trying to say because grandma has a special connection with you and she would be able to read whatever you are saying but other people will have no clue your special communication with grandma so if you watched until this point please please do this way and grandma will know that who is the super cool super smartest grandkid and she will right away connect with that special grandkid and definitely definitely stay connected for much more fun project and your grandma and i will see you in the next video